total disillusionment. Uh, I think that's the feel from my area. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a betrayal, you know. Uh, the lack of trust now uh, is just huge in my area. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to represent South Shields on this huge issue. I mean, the direction of our country is at stake here. And I just want to play my part in, in making sure that Brexit is on it. Very insulting. And that's what I'm getting on the doorstep uh, when I do canvassing in South Shields. You know, people are angry. You know, they feel insulted that they're being called stupid. They didn't understand. They did understand. It was very clear. You know, there was national coverage on the issues and what the criteria, criteria of leaving the EU was. It said on the ballot paper, leave. We know that that meant leaving the customs union, leaving the single market. It was very clear and people knew what they were doing. The British Army gave me a great opportunity. They gave me a trade for life, taught me a lot of life skills, and I you know, owe them a debt of gratitude for that. I'm very fortunate. I mentioned earlier that um, when I made the decision to to stand for my local council and, and I, I won the seat. I've learned an awful lot in that short time. It's been around six months I've been a councillor now. And I think I'm making a difference. I know I'm making a difference. Hard times, austerity, not too much money around. But I've managed to get community initiatives going in the town. I've managed to get funding for projects in the town. I've got another big project coming up to support the local hospital. You can make a difference you know, if you're committed and passionate about things, and I'd love to have the opportunity as an MP to raise the stakes, you know, do more. So telecommunications, which was the trade I learned in the Royal Signals, and that served me well all of my career. And as I said, retired at Christmas, should be on the golf course now. With Brexit, I'm not. I'm a candidate for the Brexit party. But I'm enjoying that and I'm passionate about it oh. and committed to that. To me, Brexit should be looked at as an opportunity. The problem we've got is with Parliament taking this Remain position and the scaremor scaremongering, all of this negativity being thrown around, it's, it, 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 it's thwarting the positive aspects of Brexit and there's an awful lot of opportunity out there you know the planet you know global economy it's known as a global economy now and we should be looking at taking advantage of that red or brown sauce red tea or coffee tea cats or dogs dogs rugby or football football First words that come to mind when I say John Burke. I'm not allowed to swear, am I? Are you bothered if Scotland gets independence? Yes. I'm a, uni uh, a unionist without any doubt. They've had their opportunity. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The UK needs to stick together. If you can only ever eat one meal again for the rest of your life, what would it be? Beans on toast. Good shout, man. What at the moment are you most scared of? Without any doubt at this moment in time, Brexit not being on it is a real concern to me. How that would affect democracy in this country, it's unthinkable. If you had to live, had to live, in any other country apart from the one that we're in right now, Great Britain, what would you choose? There's no way that comes to mind. I'm a homeboy, I love the UK, I've worked all over the world, I've worked in some glamorous places, and I've always wanted to come home. So I wouldn't have anywhere that I would consider to live. If you were on a desert island, three things, what would you take with you? That's easy, really. The wife, daughter, and the dogs. Maybe more than three, I've got two dogs. 